We can, can hear you and see your screens. So uh, the floor is yours. Great. Um, so I'm Nicole from Cancer Institute of Technology, and I'm going to tell you a bit about what we've been doing in machine learning applications in energy systems. And more specifically, we started working on a patent framework to make what we've been doing and what others have been doing with machine learning a bit more easily available for everyone. So usually we work with a time series. Um, the speciality about the energy time series, as you probably all know, is that they're very seasonal and there's a lot of periodicities in them and that makes them a bit difficult for some of the machine learning applications and is also the reason why so many easy statistics does way better than the complex machine learning. But they're still used for machine learning and if working, handling it properly, it has really good results. So where do we use machine learning? Um, at the moment, we do a bit of pattern recognition and there we are detecting typical load profiles. So it's something that would, for example, look like this, see what's the typical normal weekday demand or weekend demand. Um, there's also a probabilistic demand forecasts, which I think most of you are familiar with. So just predicting, for example, the national demand, but with some uncertainty bent on how how the demand's going to be like. And we're also looking into post-processing, which is basically taking the output of, for example, the meteorological models and post-processing them in a way so that the statistical biases that are in there are reduced and we can use them properly in forecasting. So there's lots of methods, sorry for switching the slides around. There's lots of methods um, that we already have available um, from either because we've implemented them or there's so many people working in machine learning and there's so much we can, we can use there, but it's all distributed somewhere. So we want to streamline that a bit and have a Python framework that allows us to combine all these individual steps in the form of modules and either, for example, have a pipeline. So put in an energy time series, do some pre-processing, some forecasting, plot it in some way and have an output or go crazy throughout this graph. The idea is that each of these bubbles is a module or can even several modules and we can just click them together or code them together at the moment. So um, each of these modules would get added to a pipeline. And in the background, we currently set up a graph that then goes through your pipeline and connects everything you want to do. So for example, in, in this case, we read in some data, we decide which variables we want to use then one variable directly goes into the linear regression while the other variable first is scaled and then goes into a linear regression model. And either all the intermediate steps are plotted or just the result is plotted. And the idea is that with, this, with these model modules and this pipeline, you can easily store the pipeline in the JSON file and then you can access it later, making it more easier to reproduce the results that you have and also to just redo whatever you've done before. And everything in between we store in pickle data frames at the moment. So all the parameters are stored and the whole, the output of the modules. So yeah, there's lots of possibilities uh, for machine learning in the energy system. And we're working on this new Python framework. And we would be really excited if this framework isn't only usable for us in the analytics part and for the machine learning community or the applied machine learning community, but also for people that are maybe doing energy systems modeling. So it would be great if you have some input to that or just want to contribute or 
just there's things that you would love to have included so it's usable for you i'd be happy to hear about that and we're looking for a name for the framework so if you're really creative with name giving i'm all in for it as well thank you thanks nicole for keeping very good time Uh, surely there's some questions out there. I mean, this community has not engaged with um, artificial intelligence to a great degree, but there must be some questions. Severin is a question. Yeah, hello. Um, my question is in regards to like downscaling these demand profiles. Often we want to do energy system analyses on smaller spatial domains or rather, you know, with smaller um, regionizations of your domain. So I'm curious if some of these machine learning algorithms could be used to like downscale a national profile, such as from NCOE, um, and at least get like a good bit for what demand for different regions. Um, yeah, so it would depend on your input data. That's the classic machine learning answer probably. So if you have regional data, then you can easily do regional profiles. Or if you know how the demand, the total demand is distributed in the regional profile, uh, in the regions, then you could do regional profiles as well. But if you have no idea how the total demand, how we get to that total demand based on the regions, then the, the machine learning won't help you probably. Does that answer the question? Yeah, definitely. I just um, I've kind of thought about this idea a little bit um, over time, and I've always thought that it might be possible to use like the French RTE regions, for example, um, you know, which give a uh, regional time series for their demand profiles, and then apply it to like the NSOE uh, demand from France and try to see if you could make some downscaling procedure work. I, I think that would be possible, yeah, if you have the regional data available. Okay, Ralph has a question. Just wondering what machine learning frameworks you're using or what you support, or perhaps another way of asking that is how you guide the user through this huge world of machine learning. Uh, do you limit their choices or you let them implement anything they like within your pipeline? Well, in, in the one, we're basically working with sklearn as a base machine learning library and we want to be, yeah, all, all the standard libraries should be available. We also want it to be, so we also want the pipeline to be able to work with Keras and PyTorch or Keras, I don't know, but PyTorch definitely. And the idea is that you, as long as you kind of follow the template that we're thinking of and the output is, so the input and output is roughly the same as in all the other modules, you should be able to integrate everything. That, that's the general goal, at least. A uh, question from Greg. Yeah, I was just curious if you've been engaging with the Climate Change AI uh, forum and community, because I know that there is some uh, power systems work being done by, by people over there. Not af actively yet, but uh, thanks for the hint. I'll look into that. Yeah, I know that uh, they're, they're uh, I mean, they had to cancel a, uh, conference that was going to take place in a couple months, but there are, there are definitely uh, power system uh, papers that were going to be presented there. Thanks. Yizeng, question? Uh, yeah, my question is, uh, have you tried uh, using uh, machine learning to solve, for example, economic dispatch or optimal power flow problem, problems in power system? No, not yet. Uh, or we have been trying to get uh, do optimal power flow with probability with the probabilistic input, and we're using machine learning for that. But that's just work in progress now, so I can't tell you how good or bad that works at the moment. Right. Thank you. Yes. So hi, um, I was wondering if you have any uh, references or any preliminary information, maybe a GitHub or something where you can get more information. On the Python framework? Yeah, on your work, what you're doing at the moment. Uh, 
Yeah, sure. I can I can uh, share the I can share more information that with you. Probably, I mean, I have a GitHub account, but that's mm, there's not that much information on there. Um, but if you check out the IAI website, so the ins I'm at the Institute for Automation and Applied Informatics, you should get some of our publications there. And if you're interested, then the GitHub repository is at the moment private because it's not ready to be released to the open, I think. But if you're interested in, in that, then I would be happy to share it with you privately. Great. Thank you very much, Nicole.